Greetings. It's InfoWars Nightly News. It's your Friday edition. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Today is February 3rd, and we've got quite a show for you. Coming up later in our, during our interview section, Alex is going to do a 30-plus minute interview with Fritz Springmeier, picking up where they left off uh, from yesterday's interview on the radio show. And, uh, but we've got a whole lot more. We're going to talk a little bit about Monsanto, Fast and Furious, and all things in between. So let's get started with our uh, first story is a drudge link that was, uh, we called it the Super Juicy today, and um, it was TSA trained Super Bowl hot dog sellers to spot terrorists. And there you can see the spot on drudge. And uh, it seems like an over 8,000 stadiums, uh, 8,000 stadium vendor, parking lot attendants, shuttle bus drivers, and other transportation officials received the agency's first observer training for detecting and assessing indicators and planning tactics of potential terrorist activities. So these people will be doing double duty. In addition to slinging you hot dogs and beverages and stuff, they are going to be asking you questions about where you're going and what you're doing, maybe even grabbing a little junk here and there. And pretty, pretty interesting how the TSA has managed to just worm their way into every facet of our lives and uh, no one's going to say anything, and I'm sure they'll gloss over it during Super Bowl coverage and make it seem like it's a great thing for you and I. So anyway, that was our top link on Drudge today, and thanks for Drudge for linking to that. Our next story goes into Fast and Furious, and where uh, it was uh, February 2nd, Eric Holder went before um, Congress again, and this time to answer more questions, which he didn't do. He, he stated there's no attempt at any kind of a cover-up. Holder told lawmakers well into a hearing about whether he had been forthright in responding to requests of the House Oversight and Government Relations Committee, led by ISSA, who we found out earlier this week when we had Wayne Madsen on that he was known as a car thief before he became a congressman. And uh, so looking at this article, I did some little bit of digging just into the different stories we had covered into Fast and Furious. There's an InfoWars article that uh, ATF had plotted to use this to demonize the Second Amendment. And we have the email quotes. Uh, let's pull those up real quick. So out of InfoWars, the email showed ATF members congratulating each other for blaming border violence on guns bought from U.S. dealers, despite the fact that the feds were the ones delivering them straight to the Mexican criminals under the program, Fast and Furious. And it went on to say that uh, some of these firearms dealers were concerned that these guns were ending up in the bad guys, only to be reassured by the ATF that there's nothing to worry about. So obviously, Holder was not doing any type of cover-up. And uh, we have another article from CBS News. Even they were documenting the fact that the ATF wanted to use Fast and Furious to make a case for gun regulations. Moving on, we'll go to the weekly standard that shows that the Obama administration sealed the records of Fast and Furious and the death of Agent Brian Terry. And they sealed the court records containing alarming details of how Mexican drug smugglers and a murdered a U.S. border agent with a gun and connected to, connected to a failed federal experiment that allowed firearms to be smuggled into Mexico. And that's not all. We also have a Department of Justice memo dated April 2nd, 2009. And here, this is from Eric Holder, where he's going into Mexico, Cornavaca to be exact, and telling them, telling them that we're going to be putting agents and money into this whole new effort, and we're committing all these resources to making sure that, uh, to supplement our Project Gunrunner. So there you go. Obviously, Holder has no idea what's going on, and the buck doesn't stop with him, and these ATF agents were just out of control acting on their own cognizance, uh, creating this program. Yeah, we really believe that. In fact, we know this was going on before in the Bush administration. Here's uh, Daryl Issa talking about that on Meet the Press. And again, we know that under the Bush administration, there were similar operations, but they were coordinated with Mexico. Uh, they made every effort to keep their eyes on the weapons the whole time. So we're not per se saying that tracing weapons is a bad okay. idea. Uh, well, Cheryl, uh, what do, you, what do you mean? Yeah, we don't think tracing weapons is a bad idea as long as Republicans are doing it. So see, both sides are doing it, and we're going to illustrate that with uh, some Monsanto news later, that it's both sides of the, of the coin that are trying to poison you and run weapons into Mexico to blame it on the Second Amendment. Moving on, U.S. uses depleted uranium, uh, makes graveyards in Afghanistan, and this has to do with the fact that in almost every type of 
machinery that, and every type of weapon that we have, including the A-10 Warthog, the Apache helicopters, the Bradley vehicles, uh, all contain DU munitions. And every time they shoot those in the ground or fire their gun, they're creating DU dust that people are breathing in. It's causing cancers and sores. In fact, they uh, did an examination of the urine uh, and found uranium isotopes, which are 300% to 2,000% higher than normal levels. And uh, if you look at Afghanistan as well as Iraq and in Yugoslavia, you find that wherever these weapons are used, you will find graveyards of people dying from cancer and other unusual diseases. And we've had Dr. Doug Rocky on to explain this and how his team, when they were looking into it, they all started dropping dead. And he's not doing too well himself just from the exposure. And this is happening to our men and women who are also using these weapons and then coming home and spreading it to their kids, to their spouses, to anything they touch. It's just not a good thing, and we should not be using depleted uranium. We shouldn't be taking radioactive waste, putting it into our munitions, and then firing it around. Sort of like the same thing that we do with fluoride in the water supply. We're taking a toxic waste and diluting it around to try to mitigate some of the factors of it. And now we come to another interesting article that's had some, a lot of, it's been a pretty hot article, uh, or pretty hot subject the last couple days. After cutting ties with Planned Parenthood, coma donations up 100%. And in the wake of this week's announcement that Susan G. Komen for the Cure will no longer be awarding grants to Planned Parenthood, the breast cancer organization's donations have gone up 100% in the last two days. And um, it was it Nancy Brinkler, or, and I'm sorry, Nancy Brinker, founder and CEO of the Komen Foundation, said our donations are up 100% in the past two days. We understand and we get very emotional too. We do this every single day of our lives. Now, that was on the second. Today, we have two articles, one from the Wall Street Journal, one from Fox News. So we look at Fox News. Komen drops plans to cut Planned Parenthood grants. Apparently, they're having a 180 on this. And then we go also to the Wall Street Journal, pretty much the same headline, Komen drops plans to cut Planned Parenthood grants. So now, I guess they're having an about face on this issue. And we're going to have... Uh, Pastor Clinton Childress, who we did a really long expose into the abortion industry, oh, I guess it was two money bombs ago, we played his interview, and we're going to have him on Monday to kind of go over this issue and explain things, and, and in fact, we have a clip from Pastor Childress here from that interview talking about when you get an abortion, it increases your chances of cancer, which is why Susan G. Komen, if they're an organization dedicated to fighting cancer, should not be giving money to a group that their procedures actually increase the chance of cancer, if that makes sense. Here's the clip. You know, your listeners ought to know that abortion is the most performed operation on a woman. If there's 12% African Americans in this country and they're accounting for, I'm gonna use this figure, this is extremely conservative, 37% of the abortions of the nation. Yeah, that's 37%. That means that African American women, you know, are having this operation performed on them more than any other woman, and to the point where that it is genocidal when it comes to the number of live births. Why did I say that? Well, up until 1973, breast cancer was not an issue with African American women; it was not a problem. Now it's epidemic. And uh, Joel Bryn, who's from this great state of New Jersey. <laughs> Um, more or less did 28 studies, 21 conclusive, that there is a link between a woman who has abor an abortion, especially a first term pregnancy, and uh, chooses to abort, will over 500 percent in some studies have, uh, uh, basically will contract uh, breast cancer. It is a recent study in Turkey uh, they concluded 66% of women will contract breast cancer. Your, your, your chances increase 66%. And simply because when you, you miscarry, when a woman miscarries, the brain knows it and sends messages throughout the body shut down. When you surgically do it and you, and you abort the child surgically, brain does not recognize that and it continually sends signals and what uh, organ is affected by it the most is the breast of a woman. It, by the time it 
begins to shut down and realize this is no child. There's so many hormones and other things that are there, and they become cancerous later on. Now, African-American women now lead the country in preterm deaths of their children because abortion is being sold to African-American women as a contraceptive which is unquestionably the most detrimental thing other than the death of the child because you now have created a, uh, a situation with this woman that she's not able to carry full term when she wants a child. And so um, preterm deaths, once again, was not an issue in the African American community. And now they lead the country. And don't take it from Reverend Childress. Look up the information yourself. Look up the studies that have been done. Check that out. And regardless of what your position is on abortion, if girls 16, 17, 18, these young women who are going in there using this as contraception, they need to be educated to the fact that their chances of cancer are going to go up and their chances of never having children are going to go up if they go through this procedure. And, um, you know, that's, that's really what we have to look at. So. Um, I would ask Susan G. Come to reconsider if they really are interested in stopping cancers, they should not be funding an organization whose procedures actually lead to the increase of cancer. Moving on to Monsanto, another loving company. This is out of Natural News. Help stop former Monsanto VP from attaining top position at FDA. Sign the petition. And the one man who may be responsible for more food-related illnesses and deaths than anyone in history, Michael R. Taylor, has just been promoted from U.S. Food Safety Czar to Senior Advisor to the Commissioner of the FDA, a position which would enable the giant biotech company Monsanto to silent, silently and legally feed cancer-causing vegetables to every living person who is not 100% strictly organic. President Obama has appointed the former Monsanto vice president and lobbyist Michael R. Taylor to the throne. This is the same man who was food safety czar for the FDA when GMOs were allowed into the U.S. food supply without undergoing a single test to determine their safety risks. And this is like putting terrorists in charge of the world's food supply. What do you think the cancer numbers are going to look like in 2016? So who is Michael Taylor? Probably somebody you've never really heard of. Well. A quick search into his background, he started off as a staff attorney for the FDA back uh, in the late 70s. By 1981, he went to a private practice at King & Spalding, a law firm that represented a biotech company, a little company, named Monsanto. Then in 1991, he left the law firm and went to the FDA, back to the FDA, and uh, created the post of Deputy Count Commissioner for Policy. And between 94 and 96, he moved to the USDA, where he was Administrator of Food Safety and Inspection. Then he returned back to King and Spalding and then went on to Monsanto to become Vice President for Public Policy. Does this sound like a revolving door? He once again, in 2009, returned to government as Senior Advisor to the FDA Commissioner, where he pledged $20 billion, I'm sorry, $20 billion, to fight hunger in Africa over the next three years. Taylor was a senior fellow at a research think tank, Resources for the Future, where he published two documents on USAID that were both funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. We know how loving they are and how much they really want to help you. And now we've got Obama who wants to appoint this guy to one of the highest levels in our, in our food safety. We've got a clip here from the video that we carry, The World According to Monsanto, and it's all about Michael Taylor. So let's go to that clip right now. Early on, uh, a gentleman by the name of Michael Taylor became the deputy uh, administrator of the Food and Drug Administration right at the time that they were about to set out their policy. Who is Michael Taylor? Today he has a foundation called Resources for the Future. Hello, Mary Monique speaking. Hello, it's Mike Taylor. My questions are about your, your role. I mean, when you uh, were working at the FDA, yeah, um, before hi being hired by the FDA, you worked as an attorney for Monsanto during seven years, didn't you? Well, I was a partner in a law firm of which Monsanto was a client, and uh -huh. I worked on some Monsanto matters, yes. Uh -huh. And apparently, if I understood well what I read, um, the FDA created a new position for you, Deputy Commissioner for Policy? Well. Because there was a special need at that time uh, at the FDA, 
because of the new GMOs? Uh, it, had, it had nothing to do with GMOs. Ah. Nothing at all to do with GMOs. I wasn't the author of these policies, but that's just, that, that's very, that's just false. He moved over to the FDA in July of 1991. Up until that time, he was at a law firm called King & Spaulding. His personal clients included not only Monsanto, but the International Food Biotechnology Council. And he had drafted for them a proposal for how they would like to see genetically engineered foods regulated. And if you look at the proposal that was written for IFBC that was Michael Taylor's with the final one that was published, it looks very, very similar. So he, if he didn't write it, it looks like somebody took what he wrote and changed it slightly for the policy. Mr. Taylor was the um, uh, deputy commissioner at the time, and he provided the leadership um, for the project. And if you remember, this is a, the same Obama that said he wasn't going to hire any lobbyists or any government insiders, which, of course, he, we know he's done exactly the opposite. And even back in 2010, Obama gives key agriculture post to Monsanto man. Today, President Obama announced that he will recess the point notice. He was doing this back in 2010, not just last year. He appointed Islam A. Sequiti to the position of Chief Agricultural Negotiator, the Office of U.S. Trade Representative. Sequiti is a pesticide lobbyist and vice president for science and regulatory affairs at Crop Life America, an agribusiness lobbying group that represents, guess who? Monsanto. So as you can see, Monsanto is making their way into every facet of government, um, especially when it comes into overlooking food safety. And how is it? How are they able to do that? Well, let's look at their lobbying track over the past few years. We go to another natural news article. Monsanto spends a whopping two million in the third quarter of 2011 lobbying the federal government. Later on in the article, they um, source OpenSecrets.org, and let's just look and see how much money they've given over the past few years. 5.1 million in 2011. In 2010, they spent over 8 million, and in 2009, 8.6 million. These are all for lobbying. And but their largest year was 2008, when it spent only nine million dollars bribing the federal government to betray the American people. But look, this isn't just Obama, this isn't just the Democrats. Back in the days of good old George W. Remember Dan Quayle, Vice President? And uh, I'm gonna read, uh, read along, you can uh, go to the Seeds of Deception, page 130. First full paragraph. The biotech industry's success with these government leaders became apparent in May 26, 1992 at the Indian Treaty Room of the old Executive Building. There, Vice President Dan Quell announced the Bush administration's new policy on genetically engineered food. And he said, I quote, The reforms we announce today will speed up and simplify the process of bringing better agricultural products developed through biotech to consumers, food processors, and farmers. We will ensure that biotech products receive the same oversight as other products instead of being hampered by unnecessary regulation. There it is, Seeds of Deception. You can get the book also at Infowars.com. I would say check it out. It's a great book, uh, especially when it talks about the gene gun and how they actually, the process of making these genetically engineered foods. They, they fire genes into other genes and see what sticks. I mean, I, I don't know if you could call that science, but they call it science and they spend a lot of money on it. And obviously we know it's for your health because they do lots of studies to, to check and see how these things react with you. Oh, uh, oh, that's right, they don't. They, um, what they do is go after the scientists who are doing those studies and ruin their lives, which you could see in scientists under attack. Our food supply should be kept local. It shouldn't be big agribusiness. We did that experiment since the 1920s. We've been doing that experiment and it hasn't worked. And we see that. We've depleted our soils. We're creating crappy food. We're creating giant farms, um, animals being packed in, and we know this doesn't work. We know there are alternatives, and we know it's about keeping it local, but they don't want the food supply to be kept local. People like Monsanto want to be in control of this so they can control your very lives. But we're not done with Monsanto yet. Oh, it seems they've come out with a new sweetener, just like aspartame, but it's called neotame. New neurotoxic sweetener, FDA says no label needed, not even in organics. 
A Monsanto-created chemical, Neotame, is likely more toxic than aspartame. The FDA, FDA has quietly decided that we don't even have the right to know if it's adulterating our food, even if it's been labeled organic. Let's go to the next quote. Up to this time, Neotame hasn't been sold to the public, but that hasn't been necessary. It's been widely used widely in prepared foods. So the less awareness the less public has, the less likely it is that the public will try to avoid it. For the most part, that technique has worked. For now, very quietly, the FDA has decided that the public shouldn't be informed when Neotame is included in any product, even organic products, which are supposed to be unadulterated with the chemicals and are not required to state when Neotame is added. So there you go. Of course, this article from the group uh, Gaia Earth, they do offer a solution. Their solution is very simple. If you want to avoid foods adulterated with neotame, then grow them yourself. That's basically what they say. So that's one of your only choices, or join a food co-op, or keep it local, as they say. Moving on to another glorious topic of HPV vaccines. This comes from Kurt Lenderman Sr., who uh, writes articles from time to time, has been a guest on this show. HPV Vaccine Victims Advocacy Group sends open letter to HHS Secretary Kathleen Sabellis. She was a former governor of Kansas. And in it, and there, the group is called SaneVax. You can find out more about them at sanevax.org. They state that uh, these studies, 2.6 to 6.2 more HPV vaccinated young women experienced other high risks HPV infections than unax and unvaccinated women. And when one considers the drastic number of adverse reactions and the lack of proof of any post-marketing studies showing for success of the vaccines and outcry from patients regarding draconian measures from governments to force girls and now boys to get vac vaccinated, Secretary Sabellis, the HHS, and the FDA should immediately stop the HPV vac vaccine recommendations and forcibly remove the product from market. This is a very, very strong cry, and I'd like to commend SaneVax for making this. By the way, it states that there's been over 24,000 documented adverse reactions to this vaccine, over 3,000 very serious. But wait, the, the National Vaccine Information Center claims that less than 10% of adverse reactions are actually reported. So this number is probably a lot higher than what is stated in this article. And this is very, very sad that a lot of women out there, a lot of our young women, are being told this is for their protection and it ends up hurting them really badly. Moving on to the economy. Ben Bernanke, this is out of USA Today, urges caution in overly rapid deficit cutting. And we also have a clip from him. But Federal Reserve Chair Ben Bernanke def defended the central bank's decision to hold interest rates at record low levels so they could keep giving lots of free money to the banks so then they could lend it to you at higher interest rates, thereby making a profit while you pay out the nose. And for the next three years, during a contentious hearing Thursday before federal lawmakers. Let's go to the clip. Moreover, this sluggish expansion has left the economy vulnerable to shocks. Indeed, last year, supply chain disruptions stemming from the earthquake in Japan, a surge in the prices of oil and other commodities, and spillovers from the European debt crisis risk derailing the recovery. The outlook remains uncertain, however, and close monitoring of economic developments will remain necessary. We had Bob Chapman on today's radio show, and he explained that this is probably going to actually cre create growth in the government, maybe 2%, or it's going to be kind of uh, sideways growth, which really means no growth at all, instead of the negative 2% they were expecting. And this is because they're just printing more money, and pretty soon QE3 is going to happen, and you know we're going to lead up to this another, next bubble that will then crash, and the cycle will repeat itself until people decide to end the Fed. Moving on to the United Nations. <clears throat> UN wants, to, wants a world tax to help the poor. And uh, this has come from Deputy Director of United Nations Development Program, Jens Wendell, states he wants a minimal financial tax of 0.005% that will create 40 billion in revenue. And let me tell you, it's gonna take a lot more than 40 billion in revenue to feed the poor with what he, what he describes as people getting free housing, education, and health care. And what kind of free housing, education, and health care will you be getting? Will it be that you have to worship the UN? Will it be that you have to get a microchip in order to get this? I wonder how they're going to implement this type of program and then track all the people doing it. We know how they're going to do it. We know it has to do with microchips, and we know it has to do with forcing people onto vaccines. It has nothing to do with 
creating a, this free utopia that this article states that they're going to do. And obviously, Paul Joseph Watson knows that that's not what they want to do. It's just another case of the UN stepping in and trying to remedy a problem that they actually helped create in the first place. And if you think that bureaucracy is going to do anything with that money other than steal it for themselves, you got another thing coming. Final article today, Fed sees over 300 websites on piracy charges. Federal agents charged with the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, that's ICE, have seized hundreds of more websites and domain names in what is described as a piracy crackdown. And what, what are they doing? They're going after places uh, selling NFL merchandise that isn't licensed. And the crackdown is part of a larger law enforcement initiative called Operation In Our Sites, which has seen a total of 669 domain names seized since its inception in 2010. And they're going to take this and use it for any reason to go after anybody. They're going to say, oh, wait, you played a clip that's registered to the federal government, so we're going to take your website down. doesn't matter if you're a news site. doesn't matter if you're involved in commentary or discussing uh, our federal government seizing our rights and property in the process. They're going to use this. This is just a precursor. They're going to go after these guys, and you're like, yeah, go get them. They shouldn't be selling you know, pirated NFL merchandise. But that's not where it's going to stop, believe me. It doesn't stop there. It stops at your blog, you posting your opinion. That's all we have today except our daily quote. Our quote of the day comes from Robert Heinlein. Very short, very sweet. Secrecy is the beginning of tyranny. Robert A. Heinlein. There you go. And there was a secret society speech that uh, President Kennedy made just a few days before he was shot. And it talks about... Secret societies and secret oaths are repugnant, especially to a free republic like ours. Coming up next, Bloodlines of the Illuminati, a bombshell interview with the one and only Fritz Springmeier. Alex is going to do an over 30-minute interview with him. If you like what you're seeing here and you're watching us on YouTube and you're not a member, please consider supporting us at prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. Uh, I think today is our last day to get 44% off the yearly special, and we also have a 10-day trial, or 15-day trial that you can try out. Give us a try, see if you like us. We're doing this every day of the week, and we're going to keep on doing it as long as the governments out there are causing problems for free-loving individuals like ourselves. With that, I'm Rob Dew. You can send me emails at robd at infowars.com, and Alex will be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. Greetings, fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here announcing the first of many trips that I'm going to take across this wonderful United States that we live in. Now, we get so busy here at InfoWars.com, the nightly news, the daily radio show, the documentary films, and all the other things we're doing that I tend to never go out and give speeches anymore. And I've got a lot of ideas bubbling around in my head about the history of the New World Order, what makes them tick, and how to defeat them. So I'm titling this key speech I'm going to give. It'll run around two hours long, Blueprint to Defeat the New World Order. And we're also going to have a surprise premiere of a short documentary film we've been working on at the event. First off, I'm going to be going to Dallas, Texas, Sunday, February 19th, 2012, to the historic Lakewood Theater. And the next Sunday, February 26th, I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida. You can find out more about the events and buy tickets at Infowars.com forward slash events. Now, unfortunately, every event I've ever had, we've had to turn people away. So get your tickets early at infowars.com forward slash events. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this world. And the craziest of all is this explosive awakening. I can't wait to meet you and shake your hand. I'll see you in Dallas and I'll see you in Orlando. Infowars.com forward slash events. Sign of these evil 1770 six flags. Doesn't get any more out of control than that, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty un American what we're doing here at InfoWars.com. I mean, not only are we promoting liberty, but we're selling 1776 flags. Now that is Al Qaeda.
Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News, another bifurcated transmission. We had uh, Rob Dew doing a great job in the earlier news segment today. Uh, and now we're going to be joined by Fritz Springmeier. I had him on a few weeks ago, back on yesterday on the radio. But I wanted to have him back here commercial free for 30 minutes or so to expand our discussion of the New World Order's goals, the way they're controlling us, uh, and how it ties in with his... Uh, seminal work, Bloodlines, the Illuminati, which, by the way, is available at InfoWars.com and is back in print. Uh, very, very exciting to see that happening. And Fritz, who's published more than 15 books, is getting his publishing company back going, uh, selling some of the books that he had in storage, and is now having the bank not just put a hold on his money, but take it. And uh, we're not going to get too much into all the details. Everybody's familiar with this, that this is a new phenomenon the last few years under the Patriot Act. It happens to our operation. It happens to little old ladies I know. It happens to my dad. It happens to everybody. Or when you try to use your credit card or your debit card to get gas, it says fraud control calls up to check. Uh, we're guilty until proven innocent. When you go to get a rent car, they're asking, where are you going? What you doing? Oh, you're visiting your mom? How's she? all going into a database. And the average American's not being told this. We're being treated like we're the bad guys. We're not the ones that the Justice Department caught framing people all across the United States with 98% fraudulent conviction rates in federal court. Do you really believe 98% of people are guilty? No, they have picked juries. They have lying federal informants that lie about people. The court system, all of it's discredited. And expanding on that, uh, the the system is now setting up this giant cashless control grid where you think Bank of America was bad and others announcing $5 fees to use your debit card. The globalists are admitting that once they have their global cashless society and even to use cash, there's going to be a camera there at the cash register that checks your digital photo face scan with the driver's license database. This is all admitted. They're talking about now adding biometrics face scan on top of groping your wife and children and putting in a microwave oven at the TSA. The TSA is now on the highways. They're training all of the vendors at the Super Bowl to spy on patrons. Next year it rolls out to all Super Bowls. This is all about total control, no Fifth Amendment, no Fourth Amendment, no nothing. It is a complete revolution against our republic. So we'll start... Uh, with that, with Fritz Springmeier, who after being a political prisoner, and I've looked at the case, completely set up years after the fact for a bank robbery he didn't commit, got with no criminal record before that, total set up with the feds on him because of this book. You talk about incendiary. I, I wish the stuff in this book wasn't true. When I first read it in the late 90s, I didn't believe a lot of it. But later, separately, co continue to confirm much of what's in here. And that's why they went after him. So I hope and pray if they ever set me up with some crime I didn't commit that you'll stand up for us as well. Uh, because we have a government that ships guns into Mexico and drugs back into the U.S. to blame the Second Amendment and got caught and no one has gotten in trouble. We have MF Global tied in with the White House, stealing a billion, two hundred million dollars, getting in no trouble, caught stealing it. And they're just like, that's what we do now. They've now announced they've taken all the veterans' pension funds. Those will be IOUs now. The federal pension funds have all been drained. That was in the news last week. IOUs. They're bringing it all down with martial law over it. All the investments, all the savings. Uh, they've destroyed the family. Everything is falling apart by design. Order out of chaos. So Fritz Springmeier joins us. If you want the book, Bloodlines the Illuminati, uh, you can get it at InfoWars.com. That also supports our transmission. But also, Fritz Springmeier, again, trying to get all 16, 17 of his books back in print, or is it 19 total? I know a few are pamphlets. Uh, trying to you know, take the little bit of money we've given him to deposit it you know, from the books we bought from him. Other books he's selling himself that he has a little bit of in storage uh, th th that are out of print, basically, trying to do that. He's been with this bank for, since he got out of jail a year ago. And uh, even when the check's clear, they just take it and say, we're keeping it. Uh, I mean, th th this is the new America. And this is the system where they turn you off. They turn your card off. They turn everything off. And no one's allowed to buy or sell. And, and they're saying TSA will control the streets of America as the brown shirts. You won't be able to have a job unless they approve it. The unions are already voluntarily doing this. It is a total reign of darkness that is being set up. They're harassing the Amish, the farmers, uh, arresting people with lemonade stands, going after all people that are trying to be uh, self-sufficient. 
Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, Fritz Springmeyer, thank you for coming on with us. So uh, let's break down uh, this Orwellian cashless society. Yes, yeah, great to be on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I wanted to emphasize that because in talking with a lot of youngsters, uh, I realized that they grew up with this police state and they really don't understand the, uh, the enormity of what you're talking about. They think this is normal. Uh, this tyranny is not normal. They've gotten us really prepared for this Orwellian newspeak that they have, you know, war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. And they're, so they're calling this tyranny security. So they, they can come along. I know this case of this grandmother. She had saved her money uh, in, in a mattress. She didn't trust the banks. And she's moving from her place to move in with her daughter. And she's going through the airport with all this cash. Well, now they assume that you are guilty until proven innocent. So they seize the money from her. And of course, she didn't have any money to get an attorney to, to get her money back. She just got robbed. And by the um, way, I was about so to I'm say, I was about to say, Fritz, it's worse than innocent or, or you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. It's worse than guilty until proven innocent. It's we're taking the cash out of your wallet. There are cases in Texas and other areas where they pull over old ladies. This has been on CNN and they got two grand in their wallet. They say, why do you have this? And I'm well, I'm depression era. I, I keep a lot of money on me. And they go, nope, our new kangaroo law we can just take that no judge no jury no arrest you can't prove it's yours even when people have bank receipts now they're taking cash when they raid houses for other reasons find nothing wrong find ten thousand you're safe they just take it it's a criminal group of scum i'm sorry but you're right you're guilty until robbed and enslaved and gang raped by narcotics trafficking goons it's not guilty until proven innocent it's guilty until we totally enslave you that's correct. And so after I was on your show yesterday, I got to deal with that. I got my money back, but um, <laughs> welcome to the new world order. <laughs> uh, so, you know, a picture how the founders of this country would would feel if uh, if these kind of controls had been put on them. Back then in the revolution, you know, okay, you got to license your horse and have your horse inspected by the government before you can ride it. And you got to have emissions controls on your horse and you got to have a license plate on your horse and driver's license to ride the horse and then a separate driver's license for your buggy and, and on and on and all these taxes. How would they have felt, you know? I mean, this was not what was intended. And the youngsters that have grown up in this police state, they really don't understand that this is not the way it was when, we, when I was young. It, it's changed. The police used to be your friend. Um, they were there to protect you. They were there to help you. But now they're out looking for someone's head to bash in. And, um, you know, it's it just so totally different. It, it, the it's not got the same feel at all. And the youngsters don't realize this. So where we're going with all of this is, you know, uh, increasingly the government's taking more control, but they're being, the, they're being very sly about this. And that's where having the bigger picture helps because it's more than the government. It's the people that are controlling the government, the families we've been talking about, the families that the bloodlines we were that are exposed in this bloodlines of the Illuminati book. So so the corporations are in cahoots with this whole thing. So what you're seeing is, is our cars are increasingly being controlled by the Internet as as we go on through the next few years. They'll even take driving your car away from you and, and your car will be controlled through the Internet and, and along with the rest of the cars on the road. So, you know, we already have these smart cars that talk back to us and decide what they're going to do. Um, it's going to be increasingly that way. And people don't people's guard is not up because they don't realize that these corporations are not don't have their best interest uh, and, um, no, they want to force all of us into an artificial environment, a controlled artificial habitat where everything is digital so they can track, trace, and force fines and fees 
and, 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 and things onto that that you can't escape. And so it's about an artificial system where you're dependent on them. They admit this, and that's why they're coming after the underground economy, garage sales. I saw a, a Fox News headline, $15 million fine for garage sale, and I didn't believe it, and I went and read, and there it was. What? Yes, I'm not joking. If they say you sold a recalled toy, even though you didn't know, or a table, or any of tens of thousands of recalled things every year, you then get a million dollar fine. And if they catch multiple items, it's up to 15 mil, and they come and just take your house. So, so again, uh, here's all the big banks, offshore corporations, tax exempt, involved in every crime you can imagine. And meanwhile, they're throwing the book at the general public. These are just monopoly men. And we're getting so close to this control grid being in place. Yes, very close. Um, and so that's what we're dealing with here. And it's important for people to understand that there's controllers beyond the government. There's controllers beyond the corporations. The corporations, the governments, they're like unfriendly fronts for these, these power structures behind them. Uh, same way with with uh, the organized religion. Organized religion has been set up in, in a in, in, to a large degree to control people. But who's controlling those organized religions? What semi-secret fraternal organization is controlling it? And then what? And then who's controlling those fraternal organizations? So it's it's like an onion that has layers and layers and layers to it. And what I've been doing is over the last. 25 years is I've been peeling those onion layers of the onion free and describing them to people in books like the one that that you've been talking about the bloodlines of the Illuminati now some people think you can't defeat the new world order but it's not even our job to defeat it it's our job to stand up against evil and help others because we don't fear those that kill the body those that kill the soul and the globalists themselves, as you know, they're all into the soul, the essence. They want to program us. They want to take free will. But, but, but we are having victories. The problem is people are asleep. They're in a trance. They're given a great delusion. But there is a great awakening. Even Zbigniew Brzezinski is now writing a new book about this. Hillary Clinton is admitting it. I don't think that the globalists uh, are invincible. Uh, but, but, but I want to get your take and view on that. Wow, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, this this whole interview is is unrehearsed, so I didn't know what we would really be discussing. But that's great. Yes, there is hope, uh, and I was asked to be a, uh, the main speaker down in Ashland recently, and I met a group of young people who are dynamically creating uh, alternative technologies to to give us back our freedom and um, make us self-reliant, um, perpetual motion machines and stuff like this. They've really done a lot of incredible stuff. There, there is a lot of technology out there that could solve the problems that we have. So I would just encourage people not to lose hope, but to turn their, their focus away from the controlled corporations who are only giving us technology in a controlled fashion and look to people like the this this young community down there in Ashland that's that has viable solutions there are solutions out there well that's there what I was hope. about to say we've got to stop using the big mega banks because we're using local banks and credit unions uh, we've got to abolish the, the 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 money monopoly power of the private federal reserve and get the currency back under the u.s government control and create state banks and alternative state currencies that's in the constitution or local barter economies we've got to stop eating gmo we've got to support the the local businesses we've got to shop at secondhand stores for clothes and goodwill that sometimes has the coolest stuff ever we've got to stop buying whatever the big corporate plastic culture hype is and be ourselves and true individuals. That's how the globalists can't control us. Everything they do is about trying to force us into their controlled parameters and, and the fake choices that they give us that are no choices at all.
We've got to start organic gardening ourselves. We've got to start even with small steps, little things, and getting to know our neighbors and not watching as much mainline television. And all of this coming out of the system because it's all about, again, forcing us into this artificial habitat, controlling us. And I wanted to ask you about this. New Jersey, Arkansas, other states, now that cities all over the U.S. and Europe and Canada and Australia, New Zealand, are saying we're not going to put toxic fluoride and other chemicals that the toxic waste companies sell us and make us pay for with their lobbyists in our water. The states are coming in and saying it's the law you'll drink this substance. And now California says we'll give your kids shots even if you don't say they can. We'll do it. I mean, they're really showing who they are, showing that they know there's a rebellion taking place. Can you speak to that? What? It's exactly what you're you're talking about, how they're going to make our decisions and control us, and they're going to shove this poison down us whether we want it or not. Um, wow. Th those are amazing things. And, and to think that they're happening here in a country that considers itself the land of the free, it, it's just outrageous. Um, uh, yeah, I had to, when I was a teacher years ago, I had to bump into this. The government was trying to get me to report on what parents had not gotten shots for their children. And I was like thinking to myself, who made me a policeman for, for the, the world order, you know? Um, yeah, that's indentured servitude. Yeah, yeah. They're getting a free policeman out of the teachers. Um, and my son was going to a uh, Christian parochial school and the teacher was having the students, this was, um, he was 14, uh, the, the teacher was having the students spy, this was back in 1990, was having the students spy on their parents, keep secret journals. This was in a Christian parochial school and they were not, and the parents were not to be informed of this and I caught wind of it, and I asked her, well, who, who told you to do this? Well, they're teaching the Christian teachers in uh, state-run schools. To become certified as a teacher, you have to go through uh, a state program, and they teach them to spy. Now, now that sounds incredible, but Pete, this is in my film, The Takeover, now out for 12 years. We have the documents and the news articles. When I first saw it, I didn't believe it. All over the country, they have six-month programs in sixth and seventh grade. I, I remember when I was in high school, I didn't take it, called law enforcement in, in intermediate school, in, 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 in public school, but it's also in private. And then they have other programs where a local deputy is certified by ATF, and it says they'll have access to the kids on the playground, all this other stuff. And they have them writing journals about their family life for the police, what's in the medicine cabinet. Uh, they give them cards and say, you get money put on this when you turn people in for stuff. What's mommy doing? And, and, and now it's across the board this is going on in the government training centers, and they're being public about it. And remember two years ago, Philadelphia, and it turned out other cities, Sacramento, the laptops, the free laptops that taxpayers pay for, were watching the kids at home, and the schools announced it, and nobody got in trouble, and this is the new way they do it. And uh, now they're putting cameras from Tennessee to you name it in the showers at the public schools saying we must watch your children. Something might happen. So they're just training us. TSA will grope your daughters and sons and wives. We will watch your daughters uh, in the showers. Uh, we will tell them to spy on you. We will frisk them in the school. I mean, we're just being taught to be total prisoners. The whole country, the whole world is turning incrementally into a giant re-education camp. Yes, and then they're going to shove down what kind of poisonous water they want. They're going to give us what kind of food with poisons that they want, all, all in order to keep us weak and, and unhealthy because we're easier to control when we're not healthy. Um, yeah, it, it should outrage people. Well, again, they had a more incremental timeline. I know you concur with this in your analysis, but I want you to speak to this. They wanted more incremental, but they got so behind, and then people started waking up, so now they're accelerating, and uh, it's going to be a wild period, but I don't see it going well for them. Fritz, your view on that? Um, they've had their ups and downs. Uh, the, things did get slowed down. They, they, they initially were on the fast track, 
and then they switch to the slow track, which their slow track is way too fast for me. Um, and I, I don't know where, where we are. I know that they're scrambling to, to with their backup plans, um, but they have such enormous amount of power. The, the thing that keeps me going is, is I have faith in a good higher power that I know that whatever they do, they're being allowed to do it's like christ before you know when he was be standing trial that last day he said unless this power was given to you by god you wouldn't have the power and so i rest in that assurance that um eventually you know god's going to bring good out of everything but uh like you say we as as good uh decent people uh need to stand up for what's right. It's not even an issue of whether we're going to succeed or fail, but it's an issue of what does a good person do when they're confronted with the government demanding that they drink poison, that the government demanding that their kids be groped and, and spied on when they're in the, in the bathroom, um, that the government demands that we acquiesce to their tyranny. Well, you're right, Fritz. And, uh, and yeah, we've been talking here about 15 minutes, and I've got a lot of questions and comments about the Illuminati and things that are happening in the news. But uh, what's on your mind today? What's on your heart today? I mean, you've got the floor for the next 15 minutes, Fritz. I'm going to let you roll on, on, on key issues of understanding that you think people should, should know. <laughs> I, I think... Uh, while while uh, we along the lines that we've been talking about, I'll just um, reiterate that where we're going, people don't even see as a problem. They're just they're just naturally going along with the flow of things, and that is to tie everything, every activity of our life is going to be tied in to the beast computer through their internet system where you don't do anything in life without it being connected to the internet. And we're all going along with, with that. Even this uh, program is, uh, you know, it, they have made things so easy for us by use of the internet, but we have to understand that, that there's a catch to all of this. We, we have to have our guard up because they're, they're not giving us this technology and allowing us to use this without taking something away from us. Um, they're giving with one hand and taking away with the other. And, and so we have to have our eyes wide open that there is an agenda of control, just like you've been describing. Um, when it comes to the book, I was going to, one of the things that came to my mind was is um, address uh, one of the criticisms that uh, over the years, people have said, oh, Springmeyer got the names wrong on the families. Uh, well, that's interesting. How did I come about knowing what were the primary Illuminati families? Well, I, I started working in 1991 with some people that had been teamed together in the Illuminati that were trying to come out. And I gave them a list, a printout of powerful families and said, would you circle the top 13? And they circled one, or I mean, they, this wasn't even on the list to circle. For instance, the Van Dyne family. Well, the Van Dyne name didn't mean anything to me. I, I had heard of Van Dyne candy, but beyond that, um, it didn't mean anything to me. But when they, when they tipped me off about this, then I discovered that, yes, if you go back in Dutch history, the Dutch had something called the Ritterskop. Uh, Ritterskop was a group of nobility that met uh, periodically. And one of the few families that had been powerful down for, through many centuries was the Van der Dyne family. So the, the kind of information that they passed to me um, I started confirming in, in some incredible ways uh, therapists, for instance, uh, I, I think of one therapist in California, but there were others, called me up and said, Fritz, we are so appreciative 
uh, that you expose the Van Dyne family because I have a client uh, that's coming to me that uh, you know said that they were uh, uh, in the Van Dyne fam Illuminati family and I had nothing to make any sense of what they were saying until I saw your book. So while there's people out there saying, wow, this is wild stuff that Springmeyer is saying, I can assure you that the information that you're going to read in that book has, has been verified many times over in, um, by just so much feedback that I've gotten. That book came out originally in 1995 and uh, so I've had 15 years of feedback from people out there. And you've heard Alex Jones talk about how, you know, he got the book um, and initially it was like in, the impression was, wow, this is like way out there. And then once you're aware of the possibilities of things, you start realizing okay here's the proof of this here's the proof of that okay i'm i'm seeing that for myself and, and so there's been a lot of years for uh me to see that the information that i was uh, uh researched back in in this book was was researched back in about nine, 91 to 93 so it's almost 20 years this this information has stood the test of time. Sure, and I mean, I, I would say, and I mean, I mean, generally, it's all in the right direction. We know and confirm most of it's true. Nobody's perfect, but it's a, it's a really important work. Now, 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 looking at this, I just want to interrupt once. On, on page thirty-five, the Fabian Society of Communism. I remember reading. Oh, you know, Fritz says that their crest, their royal crest. This is like the heart of the New World Order, as you know, the uh, Rhodes Scholars, all of it, uh, socialism for the elite to make us dependent, a form of feudalism. And then later, I separately saw in a mainline publication that indeed, again, that their crest really is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I mean, wow, what a, what a wicked crest. Tell us about that. Yeah, the, the Fabian Socialists, uh, tie in with, for instance, the Astor family was was big into that, and uh, you start seeing connections uh, between the Fabian socialists and a lot of things. People like H. G. Wells, um, George Orwell, and and so forth. We we think of them as being against the New World Order because H. G. Wells wrote so much that seems to expose it. No, these people were actually socialists, you know, Fabian socialist types that were in favor of it. And in, in contrast with us thinking that they're writing these things to expose it, they're writing these things, how they can cut, how it can come about. Um, they're, they're conditioning us to accept what's coming down the line, really. Um, it, it's, a, it's a weird dynamic the way they, they, uh, they oftentimes tell us what they're going to do before they do it to us. It's their little power play, you know, the master telling the, the slave, okay, I'm going to kick your rear end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whip you 50 lashes, and you're going to stand there and take it and ask for more. <laughs> Yesterday we showed some of the Rothschilds wearing Baphomet necklaces and balls, you know, dressed in fine gowns with, with big chains around their neck with Baphomet, you know, horned devils. And, you know, there were a bunch of people in tuxedos and they're wearing big devil necklaces. I mean, I mean, they really wear this on their sleeve. Yes, and I've been down there in Napa Valley and taken a tour of the different mansions, Mandavis, Rothschilds next door, and, uh, Occasionally, they'll give tours, and when you take a tour of the Rothschild place, you will see it's not real blatant right in your face, but right here, right there, will be one of these these occultic knickknacks, and um, the whole thing is really creepy. Uh, that that's that's it in a nutshell. Creepy. Now it's the Russell Trust. They set up Skull and Bones, didn't they? Yes. Uh, interestingly, the, the logo of Skull and Bones, uh, we, we generally associate that with pirates, but back in the 17th, 18th century, 
um, Masons, Masons used that logo, and if you were buried, uh, they put a skull and bones, just it, looks, it looked like what we think of on a pirate flag. They put that skull and bones on a Masonic uh, graveyard. The, the point I'm making is, is the interconnections between all these things, when you start seeing them, it starts blowing your mind and you start realizing it's all one big slimy gooey mess that's interconnected, you know. You start looking at one thing oh, oh. and you, you, you start seeing seeing some other exactly of the New World Order. It, it, it all, all ties together. Fritz, I was just thumbing through your book here for people watching on TV, and I remember reading this in the late 90s and thinking it is ridiculous to claim that the royal family is German in England. I mean, I knew that was true, but it's ridiculous because I knew they were German. And then the main line for all the other royal families, because they killed off all the other lines on record, to say that they were connected to Dracula and that the other royal lines, the Merovingians themselves, so they went back to Dracula. And then, and then now that's all over mainstream news for about five years. MSNBC, you name it. Prince Charles now admits, yes, I go back to Dracula and he's got a house there and hangs out in Transylvania. Uh, I mean, it is just in the Carpathian Mountains. And, and, and how did you stumble upon this in your book? And then I want the guys to search engine uh, Prince Charles, Royal Family, Dracula, and show people. I mean, again, I remember reading this in like 1998 or so. I'm going, oh, come on. Royal Family is a bunch of Dracula. Give me a break. They're not, and, and sure enough, they're not even a German royal family. And it turns out they're not even really from that area around Romania today. It turns out they're even more ancient family. And, and it, it's just wild. Yeah, I, I was looking for their heritage is, is the way I came across it. Um, it it's because I was, I, I, I had quite a bit of uh, informants that were telling me about how the center of power for the Illuminati is headquartered in London. Uh, MI6 is used by the Illuminati to daily send uh, messages throughout their empire. They use the the secret societies um, and the uh, the intelligence agencies to co communicate with their far flung worldwide empire. A lot of things are actually communicated using human uh, messengers, surprisingly, and um, so. I, w I was trying to understand the British royalty better um, because I, I began to realize that they played an enormous big role in this whole thing. And it wasn't by accident that the British ended up with this huge worldwide empire. You know, people who, who don't realize that there's a hidden hand behind history would think, well, it just happened that this little island ended up o owning uh, uh, controlling a third of the world. Well, actually, it didn't just happen. The uh, international bankers in Venice, the Venetian bankers, intentionally gave the the uh, English some um, technologies, cutting edge military technologies. The Lantine sail. They they provided them with the money to get um, special longbows. The longbows that the English used were a superior weapon, uh, far superior to the muskets that Napoleon's army used. And the used. British knew about scurvy and vitamin C hundreds of years before anybody else. That's why they're called limeys. They could be 5,000 miles from home ready to fight, and the Spanish or others would you know, have open sores dying because they didn't know about vitamin C. Uh, I remember you and others talking about how... Uh, the Masons and others back to Egypt, and now they've proven it with the jade and, and the genetics in Mexico and other areas. There was worldwide trade before that. Uh, that uh, it, it turns out Columbus was given maps, and, and they already knew all that. That they had just in the Dark Ages purposefully given everyone false information and were now ready to create the new Atlantis in North America. And, and now that's all coming out. And they're digging up Vikings all over North America. Yeah, exactly. Um, the the Greeks, the the mathematicians, had a very simple way uh, using very simple uh, high school level geometry, using high school level geometry um, and angles. It's very easy to figure out what the um, 
diameter of the earth is um that that's and they had they had figured it out fairly accurately yeah they taught everybody it was flat as a joke i mean it's like telling everybody fluoride's good for you or or cast sunscreen saying the sun's bad for you i mean you know they they just it's all part of their enjoyment i mean they yes. could tell people monkeys can fly and they'd believe it it was trendy yeah well uh, they told us that the apollo spacecraft went to the moon and then i went to uh uh, Washington DC to the Air and Space uh, Museum there and I looked at that Apollo uh, spacecraft that supposedly went there and the thing's not protected from the Van Allen radiation belt the, the guys would have been fried I mean the whole once I started trying to put the pieces together they didn't come together I'm like huh this is bizarre. But, but the I, I, intel I wonder, I've got, Fritz, is, is they show us a fake space program because, as we know now, they've got 30 years advanced technology at least, and they don't want you seeing what they really got. Exactly. Exactly. You are right on track with that. It's all just a big show just to uh, – it's really a magic trick. These guys are magicians. Watch my hand over here where – and then I'm going to – what I'm really doing is with, with my right hand – but watch my 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 magic trick over here, and you won't see it over here. <laughs> uh, so we're all distracted with the the bread and circus here. Meanwhile, they carry carry out the real reality over here. Well, Fritz. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Encourage everybody to love life, to to love reality. Don't let them traumatize you to the point where you give up on reality and and take one of these alternatives like like spending the rest of your life in front of the boob tube or turning to drugs or all the other crazy alternatives to check out from reality love life people and that that right there would make a big difference if people would uh not allow the the traumas that they inflict upon us to um beat us down well, I'm glad you said that because it's not even about material wealth. They want to make us poor so that we're dependent on them. They don't want us to have that basic sustenance so that we are strong because then we can worry about higher things and then try to help others. They want us so desperate on the treadmill. But I'm glad you, you know, at the end of this interview, bring up this point because so many people hear my show and they say, this is all scary. Are you trying to scare us? It's the opposite. I believe in people's passion, their courage. And that is, as Patrick Henry says, if you know the whole truth, you want to make preparation for it. Whether I was here telling you this or not, whether Fritz was here telling you this or not, reality's still there. And so, yeah, we all grow. We all learn. I mean, I read this book 14 years ago and thought, this is crazy. Prince Charles is not a secret bloodline to Dracula. And then I went to later, you know, a decade later, Ancestry.com comes out and turns out they're all a bunch of Transylvanians that then connect into Egypt before that. I mean, it's incredible. And, and, then, and then now I learned the queen even says that. So it is beyond bizarro. Uh, it is beyond crazy. Reality is so much stranger. And I know that when we're covering these scary things, it, you know, there's robbers out there. There's killers. There's home invaders. So you lock your door at night and you got a gun. Not because you're in fear. You're in power. You're standing up and saying, I'm not going to be a victim. And so we're here risking our lives. I've been threatened with prison, attacked. They tried to set me up. They got you. I read the case, just, just cartoon level, you know, how ridiculous. Known informants, uh, felons, lying on a guy years after the fact, sending you to jail, no witnesses after you, except for these people of robbing a bank when you had, you know, 17, 18, 19 books, speaking to thousands. I mean, you know, hotter than a firecracker. And you're supposedly, while this is going on, robbing banks. I know they'd raided your house, tried to say you were growing marijuana, but couldn't find proof and said you had extremist books in your house because they were pulling some, of course, you're reading things. I mean, it's amazing, Fritz, but here you are back, and it's just a testament that we're risking our lives to bring people this, and I wish it wasn't true, but we can't be like children and live in make-believe. Reality is what we must face. And uh, Fritz, uh, we're going to end the interview here in a moment. I hope folks get the book at Infowars.com. And, um, of course, my two films that are on one DVD, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove and Order of Death that combo this are also available at Infowars.com. But 60-second closing statement, Fritz Springmeier. Well, love life. Keep your hope. Don't, don't get beat down in, in life. Um, 
we all have to go through uh, problems, but use your problems for the best and um, uh, keep keep on trucking and find the positives. We got to take the good with the bad. And um, and that's, I guess, my final bottom line is uh, I want to give everybody hope and um, encouragement. Uh, I, I'm not without having to go through my own problems as as you heard right at the beginning of this uh interview uh i i had to deal with with them taking everything i had in the bank and just taking it without any explanation they wouldn't even tell me why and but it uh, it's turned out they they returned it um but these are the things that we have to deal with and not let them uh intimidate us thank you well, well said, Fritz, and uh, stay safe, and we'll pray for you, pray for us. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this extended Friday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Of course, I'll be back uh, this Sunday and every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, InfoWars.com audio streams, where you can listen on your local AM and FM dial, and back Monday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern, all on XM channel 166, your local AM and FM stations, Global Shortwave, WWCR, all listings on the listing page um, at InfoWars.com under listen. Uh, again, the fact that we're getting on so many stations, the fact that we've got so much support, the fact that Ron Paul is surging despite all the attacks, it shows that liberty and freedom and truth is popular and evil has looked invincible many times in history. It's only when we say, okay, whatever, invincible or not, I'm coming on straight on against you. That's when we always turn the tide. And it's certainly all about testing us. Great job to the crew. Don't forget we're running a 15-day free trial deal. If you're watching this out there later, free on the web. Want to become a subscriber? See it first, along with the films and so much more. Nine years of material at PrisonPlanet.tv and support alternative growing media. Then please do so. And we're running for one more week that early bird special. Uh, that is 44% off a year membership also at PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. Great job to the crew, dedicated folks. Couldn't do it without them and you, the viewers and supporters. Please spread the word about everything we do. Check out our Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash RealAlexJones and also the Facebook as well and the YouTube channel. Just one of our YouTube channels is right at 180 million views. All right, God bless you all.